So uh, here's our Cirrus screen, our desktop, and I'm going to demonstrate the nice features, uh, particularly the automatic capture feature and how effective it is to capture our restorations. Now it's true, we uh, do need to put a reflective medium on our teeth, and uh, in some circles that's being uh, uh, suggested that maybe that's not as ideal, but you'd be surprised how fast this is. In fact, the Sirona system has, a, has uh, decided to stay with uh, this type of reflective surface because these cameras are, are faster, they're more precise because they have a shorter wavelength. So uh, this is a reflective medium that's created by Cerec. There's, there's several other brands as well, but it's called OptiSpray, and you don't need it very thick. So uh, in the mouth, it, it has a nice mint flavor to it. So I'll just put a nice thin layer on it, and that's about how fast it takes. Another nice feature of the new AC upgrade is that it has an automatic stabilizer in it. So in other words, when the camera is stable, the computer will read that and it will take the picture, which means it eliminates a lot of optical errors. So the way we activate it, there's several ways, but the left mouse button activates my camera. So once my camera's on, going, you want to make sure that the screen is clean. I see a fingerprint on there. <laughs> so we'll take the fingerprint off, even though that would be blocked out by the software. Yeah, I find it easier if I'm taking pictures in the mouth. But on a, on a model like this, what you'll do is uh, you'll stabilize and so you get your draw down and then you'll, you'll lay the camera down and it'll just start taking the pictures just like that. So once it's stable, you place the cross here in the middle of the tooth and in just a short period of time, I can take a whole quadrant Notice it doesn't take the picture unless it's stabilized. So if you had a little coffee in the morning, you may have an issue, so. We have successfully captured our preparation virtual die, as you can see, with multiple images that the computer stitched together. Now we need a bite registration and use the nice feature of occlusal control in the CEREC design. So we're gonna use the Typhodon and uh, kind of, Oh, it reminds me of those days in dental school. So we used a, a silicone bite registration material, and uh, we're going to record that as our index for our bite registration. So we'll place our cursor on the antagonist catalog here and activate our camera. And the same principle of capturing here applies as we did for the preparation uh, optics. Number one is keep the same draw as you did in your first virtual die. Kind of simple. Easy to do because we have a positioning strut here on the camera. And so we'll start on the distal of the second molar using the same draw. And there's our index bite registration. As long as we see the green check marks, that means that we're, the computer is recognizing and stitching all our optic captures together. And as long as it's green, the green checks means that you have a winning photograph. Uh, We've established two successful optical impressions. We have our preparation and our bite registration virtual die. So within the design process, once we have this good information, your restoration will be as good as the information you give the computer. So we have six basic steps to move through in our design process. Within the feature of the CEREC, when you're done with a project on a particular screen, you hit the next arrow button. That's a fundamental principle of design, and there's six of them. So we'll hit next. Right now, the computer is going to take our two virtual impressions and stitch them together. And you'll see the time bar right down here as the computer computes that information. And you will find that this is very, very accurate. If you give good information to the computer, you get great restorations and it's kind of like a lab. You give the laboratory a, an excellent preparation via an impression, you'll get an excellent response. So when the screen goes blank, <laughs> it's a good thing because that means that it's uh, stitched everything properly. You'll see both of our virtual impressions here on the screen. We have 
the yellow, which is the preparation virtual die, and then we have the tan, which is the bite registration. And you'll see that the untouched tooth surfaces that are overlaid have the speckled look. That means that the stitching is excellent. So step number one is to trim our bite registration. Kind of sounds like a laboratory procedure. So we'll take our crosshair and double click our mouse and stay about a millimeter away from the cable surface margins. Clear over to the adjacent interproximal contact surface of the second premolar and then around and once you cross over your initial start position you'll have your bite registration and so you can see the index of the upper maxillary tooth as it will fit into the duration. So step number two is, is where we're going to go next and we'll hit the next button and it says to prepare the margins. So what does that mean? Let's zoom on in. This is where we're going to trace our margins. We will find a very clean margin and that's why it's important to have a clean preparation. So I finish my preparations with like a red finishing diamond so when it's precise the computer will see that and give you excellent closed margins. So we're going to identify a margin, double click your left mouse and notice how the computer will find the margin for you. So I'm tacking it down with one left mouse click and then double click back on my red dot. I'm ready for tooth design. So the next step is number three and that's to define your insertion axis. Now here's another principle about design and that is the interproximal contact surface of your second premolar should draw with the preparation. So you, you know, in, when you're preparing a tooth, keep that in mind. And if you need to recontour the distal of the interproximal contact surface of the second premolar, feel free to do that because that's going to give you excellent control over your interproximal contact. So if you do that before you ever give the information to the computer, the computer is going to give you a great restoration in its design. So uh, we'll set our draw by just setting it three-dimensional. So I want to be able to look right down under the prep and down the surface of my interproximal contact of the uh, second premolar. We'll use the next arrow button 